It was very funny. Uh, some weeks ago, we had a session here of uh, Tibetan Buddhist chanting. And there was a girl present who said, I really can't understand this because I'm not religious. And that struck my funny bone because this isn't religion as we know about religion in the West. It's something completely different, even though uh, it employs some of the appurtenances that religion in the West, say the Roman Catholic Church, <laughs> such as the Roman Catholic Church uses incense, gongs, uh, chants, and so on. But it's an entirely different thing. Uh, it has nothing to do with trying to persuade the divine powers to send rain or to uh, give you uh, a child or to uh, ar arrange the order of the universe, rearrange it. It has absolutely nothing to do with that or to protect you or to ensure your survival. None of this is in, is, is in concern. It isn't prayers. Even though that thing I showed you yesterday is called a prayer wheel, it shouldn't be called a prayer wheel. In uh, Buddhist, Hindu, Taoistic philosophy, one simply does not pray. Although there are exceptions to this in the sense that very often in the popular cultus of Buddhism, people go to the temple and rub some Buddha's belly and offer incense in the hope that something will come out all right. But that's a perversion. So, also, when these various chants are used for purposes of meditation, you have to get a certain spirit in it, which is not that that you ordinarily associate with religious incantations. Today in Japan, when the Buddhist priests do their chants, the young people call all that kind of atmosphere created kurai, which means gloomy, dank, uh, musty. And they associate Buddhist chants with the kurai feeling, just as uh, if you were brought up in Europe, you get the musty smell of the cathedrals. And the clergy, you know, who have very little joy in life. <laughs> sort of thing, you know. And they're all gloomy people. And they've entirely lost the spirit and meaning of what these things are. I was having a conversation some, uh, quite some time ago with a very swinging nun, who's the mother superior of a very swinging order. And they're having trouble with their archbishop down in Los Angeles. And I said, you know, uh, you have to get a new spirit into the Catholic chant. And in order to do this, you should go to Allen Ginsberg, who will show you really how to chant sutras. <laughs> because he does it with a, a verve and a delight. I, I don't want to use the word joy, because that somehow has holy overtones. But this has no holy overtones. There's no sanctimony in it. Now, of any kind, you just dig the sound, that baby, you go with that, see? And so uh, these chants are called mantra in Sanskrit. We don't have a word in English for mantra. Mantra means using sound in order to understand and experience the ground of being. You have to dig sound, you have to go down into sound and feel this as the fundamental oomph behind everything. So I was talking to you yesterday about energy and its vibrations and explaining that uh, we are taught to discriminate between vibrations and say those are good vibes, those are bad vibes. And, uh, but here we get beyond all that uh, discrimination and simply go into sound itself. Listening, 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 deep, 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 deep down into sound so that you get a contact with, a union with energy that is beyond all conceptions, all ideas of what is me and what is it, 
beyond what is good and what is bad, beyond anything, you see, and you make contact with the fundamental vibration of the world. 